Fortunata here. I'm at the Key House at Munich Fabric Start. And I've got a guest with me, and I'd love for you to introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, my name is Mawson. Uh, I'm a denim designer. I work for a brand called Endrime, and I also teach uh, edu uh, educational workshops through my denim history educational platform. So, yeah. So, with regards to you, you do denim. So I it's do. A, it's an industry that has been going through a lot of changes in the last couple of years, especially when it comes to sustainability. Yeah. I mean, what's your take on that? Um, for me personally, it's about it's about actually not using cotton and, and getting rid of uh, polyester and education. That's what I've been really focusing on. Um, I'm a lecturer at four different like universities. I'm starting a PhD course next day, next day, ne next year as well. So I'm heavily involved in that part and giving back to the next 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 generation. But it's really about informing people about the best ways of making denim denim garments and the process changes literally every couple of months to how we do things, how we wash garments, to what fibres we should be using. So we've just done a collection for like Tencel uh -huh. and yes. that's been really, really fun and it's like, it took us a year doing it but we've made a collection with nine different mills and we sustainably washed every single, single, single one. Oh, wow. So no water got used in it and it's all, it looks like a rugged denim collection as, as it should be, but it's all using, all using Tencel. So but dyeing is always the, the biggest problem, I think. One of the bigger it? problems, yeah. Yes. I think the thing is dyeing is one, one problem, but obviously nowadays, well, petrochemicals is the, is the bigger thing. So the, the chemical ingredient that they use for natural or chemical, chemi chemi chemical indigo. So uh -huh. people are coming up with ingenious ways of using like bacteria now and not using petro petrochemicals. Yes. So everyone's looking at every single part of the denim chain from the spinning to the weaving to the dyeing to the washing of the garment to the making of the garments and trying to figure out sustainable ways in everything so actually it's got really interesting for me as a designer i've been a denim designer for 18 years oh, well, sir. so when i started i wasn't even using stretch but now i've gone full circle and i'm using stretch but now i want to use no polyester, so even like Candiani done this amazing denim which uses rubber instead of poly poly polyester. So oh, wow. it's fully biodegradable. Uh -huh. So everyone is coming up with really cool things and this is the platform to show it at, so yeah. So if everyone's coming up with these amazing points, yeah. would you say that as a as denim, as an industry, is sharing this information? Oh, no, completely. That's what's amazing about the denim denim community is we do share. You go to any other industry, it's all closed off. It and is, yes. in the denim in industry, we have panels where uh, uh, competitors are on the same panel and we're openly discussing problems. Mm. You know, you don't really have that in no, industry. You do not. You know, and they, so you it's see all behind the fashion closed fashion industry where yeah. everything is so private, so no, quiet. No, but I remember when I was studying, because I'm a fashion designer, mm. so I study fashion, and my tutor used to tell me, don't ever share anyone where you're going, who you're visiting, don't share your contacts. And I'm the opposite to that. When yeah. I started my own brand 10 years ago, if someone asked me, where would you get that trim from? I'll say it's from YKK, I'll introduce you, I'll even do the, intro the introduction email. Yes. I'll, I'll, get you over, I'll get you in the foot in the door. So it's yes. about giving back and sharing. And, and if you more you share, it will come back to you in other ways. I believe that. And I also feel like if somebody shares a contact, the, how they do it and how they use it, it's going to be, be different. different no, it's you. like I share mood boards with people. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I've never got a mood board from a designer before because it's very personal. And I'm like, yes, you're yeah. going to interpret it in a very different way than how I would inter in, in, like, interpret it. Yeah, so, and other people don't understand right, that, right? No, but so I don't mind sharing things like that. I'll, I'll share quite a lot. So it's all about that for me. So would you say the denim kind of industry is headed towards a more positive future in terms of yeah. being more sustainable and the materials that they use is, are going to get better? Absolutely. Well, you know, in the last few, three or four years, people have been using hemp, tensile, lysol has been around for a long time, but now it's coming to its own. Everyone's starting to understand things a bit more better and then they know it's, a, it's not the industry that we're in. We've made a lot of mistakes in the past, like a lot, made a lot of money as well. All these big companies, rich companies. Mm -hmm. So they're all getting a bit they're all feeling the pressure now that we have to do something better now. So even companies, washing companies like Tor Tornello are coming up with ingenious ways to wash jeans in a more sustainable way and mm. using no stones and using drums that have got, you know, kind of like paper in them, you know. So, it, so everyone's coming up with ways to get rid of some of the problems that we're facing, mm. but we're all heading in the right direction. Even there's an amazing um, denim producer or um, denim factory in Vietnam called Cytex and they they one of the most leading people of making jeans. They actually have their jeans all air dried in, in the factory. So instead of putting it in a massive oven and using so much power and electricity, it's just air dried on like, on like a conveyor belt. So that's a good concept. Exactly, so it's just coming up with clever things that don't cost a lot of money mm -hmm. and they're more sustainable. And, and, you know, and then but educating people along the way is the most important thing because mm -hmm. the younger generation are a lot more clued up to our generation. Yeah. They're all saying, I'll only buy it if it's like this or you know, they're more clued up. Mm -hmm. so, now everyone's waking up to it and they have to be playing ball now and 
Mm. Not doing anything sustainable. Everything should be sustainable. It should be the ground zero of whatever you do. Yes. I mean, with consumers, I mean, what message would you have for them in terms of buying jeans now? What do they? What questions do they need to ask? Um, for me personally, it's like I'm more of these. I'm more of a designer that likes to wear things from raw. Mm. So I, I would probably never buy a jean that's been pre-washed. Okay. For me, that's already a process that's quite harmful to the planet. That's, okay. that's a very extreme thing I'm saying. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'll wear a garment from raw, I'll break it in after a few years, the wash is, the wash is made for you, uh -huh. the whiskers in the, are all in the correct place. But mm. <laughs> it's a very extreme thing I've just said. But, but there are other ways. There's many companies like, like sort of like Tornello and, and also like Genologia who are coming up with like sustainable finishing. Even like Levi's did an FLX concept mm -hmm. where they, you know, letting customers design their own washes and you can watch, you know, so there's no big demand. Mm -hmm. So all they're doing is making the blank garments uh -huh. and the, the, you would actually design the wash yourself. So there's no wastage. Oh, okay. There's no, they're not making 10,000 pieces of the one jean. That's a trend, uh -huh. not anymore. You don't need to, you yes. just buy, you make the blocks, like a small, regular, skinny, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you let, you let the customer, or you give them loads of options on washes and they pick, they pick what they want. But if you so. give them options on washes, how do they know what, what's a good wash? Well, you would give them. You would make sure that the toolbox is good. Okay. So you wouldn't give them too much, too many options where they they can design something extremely ugly. But you would do it in a way that you design 15 washes, uh -huh. maybe with like three or four different fabrics, with maybe 20 different trims, uh -huh. and all those combinations will still look good, whatever they they do. Okay, so you kind like of control, you go, you kind of you, give them a little bit. Yeah, so they can but if you go to Nike or something, you can design your own shoe, but yes. they don't give you the free reign of designing whatever you want. It's it's, it's, a particular, it's a particular shoe with a particular palette of different colours and trims. It's like giving your child a choice of food. You right. give them a choice of food and what yeah, you want to Yeah, it's like going to, to a restaurant and changing your, adding certain different things into your chicken meal or whatever, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's still chicken, you know, I don't know what it is. So yeah. it's like, it's like um, but yeah, it's like that's still, but customization and customer's choice is more important, but they are getting more savvy to, to, to what's going on. Also, the ethical way of we're making things, it's like, it's very much in the conscious now People know how dirty our business really is. Yes. And they do ask questions, you know, how ethically has this garment been made? So most garments now, they have a, a like EMI rating. So it tells you how, how ethically washed it's been, how, yeah. many, how many chemicals have been used on it, yeah. if, if any. Yeah. So that kind of stuff is going to be in the public domain, if not now, but very, very soon. But we're doing it now internally. So yes. it's going to be reach the stores for sure. And how have you found Munich Fabric Start in terms of showcasing your stuff and talking I've about been, the jet I've been industry? coming to this show for probably about three or four years. And okay. um, I've just given three different talks here. So mm. I was on the lensing te tensile talk. I was on the, the Rivet 50 talk. Uh -huh. So I'm one of the, like, sort of this year, I'm one of the uh, Rivet 50 like members. Okay. So influential people, quite funny. and then. I was on the hemp panel talk, so I, I hosted a talk about hemp denim. So okay. I, I was the one who hosted it. So I was quite busy this 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 this, this time, and I was on the ten cell booth quite a lot. You mm. Sound like the voice of denim right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Pleasure. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.